Hi, welcome back to Educator.com. This is Laboratory Investigation 7, Allele Frequencies. All right, so here's the introduction. The purpose is to investigate how allele frequencies can change in a population due to natural selection over several generations. This is spurring the population towards the point where not only its allele frequencies will be changing, but potentially over many, many, many generations, thousand generations, eventually the population could change to the point where it becomes a different species compared to what it once was. And that's what natural selection can do along with mutations and other factors. We're gonna look at rabbit's fur color because you have to focus on one particular gene uh, to make this manageable in terms of natural selection, you know, selecting for or against forms of that gene. So let's say that big A, big A, homozygous dominant and heterozygous codes for gray fur in these rabbit populations. With uh, homozygous recessive, it's gonna make albino or white rabbits like this little guy here. Oh, he's so cute. But we're going to say or assume that the white rabbits are being selected against, sad face, because this isn't in an Arctic area. This isn't in a snowy environment, you know, with a high latitude and or altitude. We're gonna say it's in a uh, temperate deciduous forest. Uh, it's not snowing. If you're a white rabbit, you're born with this homozygous recessive genotype, you really stand out to predators and you're gonna be picked off pretty quickly. These are being selected for gradually. So to get this done, to represent this lab accurately, you need two color beans, one that's darker than the other, and make sure the beans are about the same size because you're gonna be selecting them randomly out of a cup uh, and you wanna be able to see or feel the difference between them. So as long as they're relatively the same size, you could use uh, pinto beans and white beans, black beans, navy beans, whatever works. Uh, and you'll see that the dark colored beans represent the dominant alleles, the light colored beans represent the recesses. You need a cup and a calculator to do some uh, division, which you could do in your head conceivably. Time required about 45 minutes. All right, part one. Assume that the population starts out with 50 rabbits or 100 beans. So we're gonna assume that there's an equal frequency of the dominant and recessive. Um, so the frequency of the dominant allele is 0 0.5 or 50% for dominant A, and it's also 0.5 or 50% for recessive, and that equals one, also known as 100% of the alleles. So this is gonna change. We're gonna see one of them increasing, one of them dropping because of natural selection and affecting you know, which ones are living long enough to pass on uh, their alleles or their genes. So we're starting out with 50 rabbits, which each of them has two alleles representing its fur color, so that's 100 beans. We put them all in the cup, and then we start randomly drawing out two beans at a time from the cup. And on a table, you wanna separate where the gray ones are and where the white ones are. So here's our separation on the table. Let's say that, okay, we, we pull out that bean and that bean, heterozygous. Oh, here's homozygous dominant. Homozygous dominant, oh, look. Albino bunny. And you can see how you would gradually just separate them until all 100 are picked. Here you've got all the gray ones, here you've got all the white ones. When you get to this point, when all the beans are selected, you're gonna kill all the white rabbits off. Assume that all of them have died prematurely to the point where they're not gonna be able to pass on their alleles to the next generation. The eagles, the hawks, whatever predator, they saw them easily in the terrain and um, served as a daily lunch for those predators. So these are gone. And let's say for you know just numbers sake that we ended up having 12 beans here, which is six rabbits that are now gone which would leave how many over here? Yeah, 88. So over here we have 88 beans, which is the same thing as 44 rabbits. Now, not all of the, uh, the gray rabbits survive. Uh, some of them get picked off by eagles or hawks as well. So we're gonna kill off 25% of the gray rabbits. You wanna do it randomly. You don't wanna purposely try to kill off ones that have uh, the heterozygous condition or the ones that have the homozygous dominant because the eagles, the hawks, whatever's eating them, 
they don't see their genotype, they just see the phenotype. So the gray ones that are heterozygous and the gray ones that are uh, homozygous dominant look exactly the same. So you want to take 25% of them out randomly, which means that 11 rabbits die, which means we've got 33 rabbits left or uh, 66 beans. So this is 66 beans. And let's assume that from that 66 beans, if we count up the remaining alleles, so these uh, 33 rabbits or 66 beans, they're still there in, in living beings. Uh, those alleles can be passed on. They can mate and, and make babies. So we're going to count up the allele frequencies that are remaining. We're going to use that to start the next generation. So of those 66, let's say that 43 are dominant, they're dark beans. And then 23 are white beans. And if you calculate the percentage, 43 divided by 66, that equals 65%. And 23 divided by 66 is about 35%. So I know this is kind of crowded, but on the next page, um, I clearly tell you, hey, we're assuming that we got 65 and 35 for the next generation. So you're going to go back to your bean piles away from the table where you got your beans from. And now you're going to start out with 65 black beans in the cup, dark colored beans, and uh, 35 light colored beans in the cup. And you're going to do it all over again. So you've already changed in one generation the allele, fre allele frequencies by uh, 15%, you know, both ways. And over time, you can presume that if those white rabbits keep getting eliminated right off the bat and they can't pass on those recessive alleles, you're going to gradually have some changes to those allele frequencies.